You want to talk? No. Why not? Go away. Where do you want me to go? Go away. Gotta love those beautiful women who look like they just came from a funeral, right? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hottest goth chicks in movies. Oh, Mr. I'm so happy. I could eat you up, I really could. You know what I'd like to do, Mr. Todd? What I dream, if the business says it's good, where I'd really like to go. For this list, we're taking a look at the ladies in film who embody the gothic subculture and have the attitude to match. Dark, mysterious, a little moody, and definitely clad in black. I can feel him running through my veins. He's still in me. However, we won't be including any actresses under 18 at the time of their role, like Winona Ryder in Beetlejuice. Well, I read through that handbook for the recently deceased. It says, live people ignore the strange and unusual. Number 10, Stokely Stokes Mitchell, The Faculty. Crash and burn, Casey. Played by Clea Duvall, Stokely Mitchell's life is turned upside down when she and her classmates suspect that their teachers may have been body snatched and replaced by a race of aliens. Stokes is your run-of-the-mill high school goth gal. Like, doesn't she just bring up memories of that mysterious and talented artist who smoked by herself before class? I always thought the only alien in this high school was me. In this film, Stokes has got the gear down. Unkempt dyed hair? Check. A sneer that succeeds in being a little cute and mysterious? Check. Oh, and don't forget her signature choker chain. Hey, don't you just love the way Stokely accessorizes the different shades of black in her ensemble? F you, got her slut. I don't know why you insist on being such a bad example for your people. Stokely understands that it takes a lot of effort to look like you don't care, even though she makes it look totally effortless. You know what, Casey, it's fiction, okay? It's science fiction. Number nine, Morticia Adams, The Adams Family. When we first met, it was an evening much like this. She's a trendsetter with sinister style. The OG goth, if you will. Morticia Adams is one of the innovators of the goth look. With her slinky black dress and funeral parlor complexion, the classic character was brought to life by Angelica Houston in the movies. Home at long last. Well, at least for a week. Created by Charles Adams, the maternal head of the sallow and ghoulish Adams clan was reportedly inspired by his first wife. A lover of pruning the buds off her roses and taking care of her carnivorous plant, her hobbies seemed to match her macabre appearance. As her hubby Gomez famously said, You were so beautiful, pale and mysterious. No one even looked at the corpse. Number eight, Jennifer J. Wilson, my first mister. I don't really have a passion for the name Jennifer, so I refer to myself as Jay. I don't think of myself as a teenage girl or a woman. I'm just the opposite of a boy. Lily Sobieski plays Jennifer, a gothic teen who only comes out of the stockroom to make fun of her stuffy boss, Randall. But soon they learn to trust each other and share their experiences of estrangement from their respective families. So are your parents divorced? Very f***ing divorced. Lily's take on the goth punk look is a bit sharper, with numerous piercings, half purple hair, and tattoos here and there. Despite her general keep away vibe, there's a soulful nature in her eyes. Deep down, Jay, as she prefers to be called, eventually drops the moody outfits and self-imposed distance from others, and through her efforts, reunites Randall with his estranged son. Does this mean you're coming with me to meet him or what? Yeah, you know what? I will go with you. Number seven, Tosh Guaneri, Urban Legend. This is my phone line too. Danielle Harris plays Tosh the Goth, a late 90s representative of the gothic subculture on a bit more of a Victorian trip. With her dark lipstick and alluring black corset, what freshman wouldn't want to have a dorm room on her floor? That is, except for the whole bit about the serial killer prowling a university campus and slaying students according to famous urban legends. She missed a big warning sign in the movie, and being the main character's roommate and all, poor, poor Gosh Toth was pretty doomed from the start. Well, at least she looked good. Better check her paw. She's looked like that for years. Number six, Astrid Magnuson, White Oleander. I'm Astrid. It's nice to meet you, Astrid. An interesting anomaly on our list, played by Alison Lohman. Astrid doesn't seem to initially fit the prototypical gothic standard, blonde hair and all. That is, until we see Astrid's pain and hardship manifest itself in her outward appearance as she goes from blonde and sunny to black and complicated in her hair color and clothing choices. 
Why do you hate her, Astrid? Is it because you think she committed murder or because you feel abandoned? She faces a family crisis and bounces from one foster home to another until she visits her long absent and murderous mother in jail, intent on finding out what really happened to her family. At the end of the, at the end, I just wanted to throw you against a wall. Watching her journey gives us a deeper representation of her character, making Astrid seem more attractive and real. No matter how much she's damaged me, no matter how flawed she is, I know my mother loves me. Number five, Kim Diamond, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Something happened to us in the woods. Something evil. This sequel to the successful flick The Blair Witch Project gives us the cynical goth psychic Kim. After she decides the location of the original film's mysterious goings-on would be a perfect road trip destination with her friends, she gets a bit more than she bargained for when her gang is beset with hallucinations. They're here. Well, where? Do you see them? In my mind, I see them. Kim's more of the drama school goth type, well-read and cynical, and with eyebrows made up in a permanent arch of irony. Hey, look, where I come from, people think that because I dress in black that I'm some kind of sick killer or something. She's not averse to wearing crushed velvet dresses or lying behind a tombstone to feel the energy. She may be terrifying, but she's not afraid to tell it like it is, making her that much more attractive. They should have never let you out. You're a long way from sane. Number four, Ginger Fitzgerald, Ginger Snaps. Suicide's like the ultimate you. Ginger Fitzgerald is a dark soul if ever there was one. Along with her sister, she has a fascination with death and sports a look that falls somewhere between early 80s Madonna and suburban rebel. Too much blood. And I can see you're gaunch. Just do it. Of course, that was all until she was bit by what she thought was a strange dog one moonlit night. Soon after, some bizarre behavior and unwanted body hair pop up, and Ginger realizes it was no stray dog, but rather a werewolf who infected her with its werewolf curse. Nothing like a real dance with the occult to build up your goth cred. Her subsequent possession gives her that real edge as she's pushed along by her darker urges, making her all the more dangerous and certainly hotter in the process. Number three, Nancy Downs, The Craft. Now is the time. Now is the hour. Ours is the magic. Ours is the power. Firuza Balk has a face that was made to rep the goth look, with her dark-rimmed, arresting eyes. She plays Nancy, the alpha female of a high school coven of witches who has a hunger for power and the dark arts. It is better that you should rush upon this blade than enter this circle with fear in your heart. How do you enter? With perfect love and perfect trust. Her black makeup and pale skin, set off by her pearly whites and maroon lipstick, make Nancy a bit more rock and roll than your average high school goth chick. Plus, she's got a smile that manages to somehow be both gleeful and murderous. This rebellious teen has got that will ruin your life as you love every minute of it kind of vibe, and is not afraid to get into trouble, making her a great example of a badass babe. You know, in the old days, If a witch betrayed her coven, they would kill her. Number two, Lizbeth Salander, the girl with the dragon tattoo. No, you're right, not to include that. I know. Lizbeth Salander leaped off the pages of Stieg Larsson's Millennium Trilogy, and she's more than just a woman in black. Portrayed by the beautiful Rooney Mara in the film, she's a dangerous and well-trained woman on a mission who can hack a mainframe one minute and display her jujitsu skills the next. I guess I must have alarmed you turning out like that. If you that. touch me, I'll more than alarm you. She's pierced, has a spiked necklace, and of course sports the film's titular tattoo. The thing about Lizbeth is that she's not just trying out different fashion choices. She's communicating that she's a person who's seen some serious stuff and is not afraid to let her appearance convey her complications. Her tragic, rebellious spirit makes her all the more alluring. They say I'm insane. <laughs> no, it's okay, you can not, because it's true. I am insane. Before we get to the top goth, here are some honorable mentions. I do believe everyone was invited. Am I right, Detective Martin Van Zandt? Hey, Hi. No, Caddy, you gotta steal that book. No, 
No way. Oh, come on, we could publish it and then everybody would see what an axe wound she really is. I don't steal. That is for your feet. Caddy, there are two kinds of evil people. People who do evil stuff and people who see evil stuff being done and don't try to stop it. Number one, Elvira. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Unpleasant dream. And finally, who could our number one pick be but the queen of all goth chicks, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Is there anything that could possibly shame you? Yeah, wearing this in a public place might do it. Born with the unassuming name of Cassandra Peterson, Elvira is an iconic late night movie hostess who quickly caught our attention due to her enticingly macabre makeup and cleavagey funeral garb. I used to get the same line about makeup from the nuns at the orphanage. Of course, I was only eight. She's been spun off into movies, comic books, and even a pinball machine game. She's eminently recognizable with her black beehive hairdo and beauty mark. She was doing the vampy goth look earlier than most on this list of ghoulish and good-looking gals, and nobody in the movies does it better. Seems to me it's all this cheap little tart's fault. Cheap? Who are you calling cheap? What's that perfume you're wearing, catch of the day? Did we get the right graveyard girl? Body snatchers, humans became emotionless. They completely lost their identities. Any ladies of the night that you'd like to see on our list? Sleepless night. Walk with me, Fester. For more top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. All right, Greg. Now scram. Go. Shoo. Go get pierced or whatever you do.